Hello and welcome back to my bench. Today we want to talk a little bit about oscillators and especially about our quartz uh, oscillators like uh, you can uh, see it in here and uh, well this is uh, no special radio uh, who has uh, already seen my uh, earlier videos know that uh, this is uh, only my uh, radio for uh, training purposes so this is uh, only uh, an example but um, well in uh, this radio we have uh, as well um, this uh, quartz uh, oscillators um, it might be the mother oscillator or it might be the um, carrier oscillator so that is uh, not uh, important uh, right now the only thing uh, what uh, we wanna uh, highlight uh, today is uh, how uh, is it possible to get these oscillators stable against frequency drift and uh, if you have seen my uh, last video where we had the problem with the carrier oscillator so that uh, the radio was uh, drifting especially in uh, SSB um, we want to look a little bit more what we can do against drifting oscillators okay so this is a normal quartz and uh, this uh, quartz are used to produce uh, oscillators um, with it and uh, well the stability of the uh, oscillator depends on the quality uh, of this quartz and uh, you get uh, different uh, types so the um, lowest quality only have uh, 100 uh, ppm um, a bit better uh, quartz have 50 ppm and uh, now you know you can get uh, better quartz and uh, well it depends what the manufacturer bought for the product and um, well if they decided to buy only a very cheap quartz then it is clear that you will have drifts well and besides the fact that uh, you can get this normal quartz in uh, different uh, qualities and uh, different qualities means that uh, you can get already a normal quartz with uh, more or less uh, high higher uh, drift so beside that uh, in um, different uh, products uh, we have uh, different oscillators so for uh, instant this here is a quartz or better said this is a voltage voltage controlled oscillator and uh, this product here this we see x uh, ox we see ox uh, has been uh, taken out uh, a cell phone because uh, you may imagine that uh, in a cell phone you really need a very stable oscillator and uh, therefore in our cell phones this kind of uh, oscillators are built in and well this uh, kind uh, of uh, oscillators are already uh, very very stable because otherwise our uh, cell phones wouldn't work remember we have uh, digital devices which uh, needs to be synchronized 
on a distant end and therefore if uh, the uh, oscillator is not really stable they never would be able to synchronize so uh, therefore uh, they really need a very good mother uh, oscillator let me call uh, it that way but beside uh, this uh, voltage controlled oscillators we uh, also get often controlled uh, oscillators and uh, often controlled uh, oscillators are beside the uh, atomic standards uh, the most the uh, most um, accurate quartzes which are on the market or better said uh, the most accurate oscillators so therefore you may uh, already understand that uh, there are different kinds available on the market and you may also uh, imagine that uh, the price of uh, this different uh, quartz are different um, expensive so therefore you may understand that uh, we have um, uh, less quality quartz inside our CB radios and uh, in the past we also had uh, very bad quartzes uh, in uh, amateur radios uh, as well. Today this uh, has changed a bit. In a two-day amateur radio we minimum have voltage controlled oscillators and that makes life easier concerning frequency uh, stability. But still there are a lot of radios in the market with uh, this simple quartzes and you already have seen when uh, we did the alignment um, at uh, the mass, so the last video, uh, you have uh, seen that uh, only uh, due to the temperature in the radio, which uh, is caused uh, by the uh, power amplifier, so if you transmit with the radio, then of course the uh, final transistors get hot and the temperature will also be inside the radio housing and uh, that already will influence the uh, oscillator stability so therefore it is really essential to have first of all a good quartz or better uh, voltage voltage controlled uh, oscillator or much better an often controlled but uh, that uh, is uh, not the case so we still have the simple quartzes and therefore we uh, will think about a solution what we could do to stabilize this old and cheap quartzes in a way that uh, they are really stable. Well and already in the uh, 80s when um, often controlled oscillators or uh, voltage controlled oscillators um, were so much expensive that you really um, were not able to buy those uh, oscillators easily. So um, from the 80s uh, we have this uh, idea or we found this solution that uh, we took simply uh, a part of uh, or a piece of copper like uh, this and uh, we put simply a quartz into it like uh, this okay and uh, then we installed uh, a transistor to it like uh, so all right and then we 
put uh, only uh, power onto the transistor and you know only by uh, putting some uh, current through the transistor this copper gets hot and uh, it is easily possible to heat a uh, um, piece of uh, copper with quartz inside up to let me say 60 degrees centigrade and uh, that is then uh, a little bit like an oven controlled um, oscillator if you put also a sensor to this circuit so that means um, the transistor gets current uh, as long the temperature which you want to have let me say 60 or 65 degrees is not reached and if it is reached in that moment the sensor reports this temperature to a circuit to a little circuit and then uh, the transistor gets switched off and then the temperature will drop again until the little circuit recognizes that uh, the temperature is dropping and will then switch back on the oscillator heating that uh, we can constantly hold the temperature let me say around 65 degrees centigrade and then you will not have the drift which is caused uh, by the final transistors inside your radio which uh, will as we have seen it um, with uh, the mass radio uh, will not be able to influence this oscillator any longer well and uh, what we can uh, see here this is now uh, the example how it could, could uh, look like so uh, as I already said we uh, put a little uh, copper uh, band uh, around the quartz and uh, we uh, put this uh, transistor uh, into it or between this uh, both uh, copper uh, plates and uh, the transistor is now the heating element and then we will have additional to that uh, a sensor which uh, has to go into here and uh, then we uh, really can control the temperature of the quartz and that means uh, we will be able to get uh, rid of uh, the, uh, the, the, the frequency drift and that is very very helpful especially on uh, when we uh, would like uh, to operate on a single side band well and therefore we uh, developed uh, this little uh, circuit and uh, well it is basically uh, very easy because uh, we have here in uh, the middle uh, a little op amp and uh, we have here our quartz so this is uh, just uh, for testing the circuit and you see here our heating transistor so that is uh, what we have seen before and uh, well the uh, little op amp is uh, working as a comparator and uh, so we can uh, compare a reference uh, voltage with um, with uh, the sensor uh, voltage at least and uh, that means if uh, we have a, a sensor connected uh, to this we can then switch the heating transistor off if the wanted uh, temperature is reached for the moment in time here is uh, not a sensor connected uh, to the circuit it is only a pot uh, but uh, we can uh, simulate uh, with this pot uh, the sensor because uh, what we want to see right now is if this circuit is uh, basically working therefore I have connected 
the breadboard uh, circuit to the power supply and uh, I've chosen 13.8 volt because that is the voltage which is uh, normally uh, available from uh, a power supply which is used uh, for um, radios to um, operate and uh, supply the radios so therefore I am choosing exactly the same voltage because the circuit can uh, simply um, be connected to our power supply that means it can easily connect it inside the radio to the both uh, power leads which uh, are coming into the radio where we can oops we can uh, see it here so this here is uh, our power connector and uh, inside of course we have then available the 13.8 uh, uh, volt and we easily could uh, wire um, the uh, this little circuit to yeah directly to uh, our power supply inside the radio and then the little circuit will have the needed voltage uh, what it is uh, needing okay and uh, as i said uh, this is uh, only a pot and uh, i now gonna change the uh, resistor of uh, the pot and uh, you will then suddenly see that uh, this red uh, led uh, is lighting up and that means the uh, heating transistor uh, here is now engaged and uh, you can uh, simply see it as well um, at uh, our power supply yeah when the red uh, led is uh, lighting uh, up you can uh, simply see that uh, there is a current uh, flowing through the heating uh, transistor of about uh, 100 milliamp and uh, this 100 uh, milliamp will be good uh, for heating up uh, you know this uh, quartz up to a temperature of about uh, let me say 60 degrees and that is uh, enough to uh, hold at least the temperature stable and if we uh, go then and uh, change the resistor at uh, the sensor um, we can easily see that uh, we can see that uh, the LED is switching off and that means that uh, yeah you see no current is uh, running through the circuit any longer and now I will uh, turn it into the uh, other direction and uh, you see then suddenly the current is uh, now flying through the heating transistor and uh, will heat up at least our our uh, quartz to the desired temperature well and you may uh, ask yourself if uh, this is really working and uh, as you can see uh, the uh, circuit uh, is engaged so that means that our heating uh, transistor is uh, switched on and you can already see that uh, 60 degrees uh, centigrade are already reached so that is uh, I guess a proof uh, for um, the function or the fun functionality of this little circuit and you can uh, see um, as well on uh, the power supply that uh, yeah uh, the cons consumption of this circuit is uh, 110 milliamps so it is not really a huge um, power which is needed to heat at least um, the quartz and uh, you clearly can see uh, that uh, we are really able to reach a temperature now of about uh, 60 
Yeah, it's uh, creeping up to uh, 63. Now we have 63. And uh, that means if uh, we want to have uh, 60 degree and uh, if we would go now back here to our sensor and uh, I will now disable the heating transistor um, with the simulated sensor and you see now the LED is off and um, then uh, you see already that uh, the temperature is uh, going down and uh, I need to switch uh, again the heater on so you can see it uh, with uh, the red uh, LED and uh, now the transistor is uh, working uh, again and uh, you see that the temperature is again coming up. So basically you can see that uh, this little circuit is working so no problems whatsoever. So <clears throat> what we really want to do right now is um, put it on a little um, proto board uh, so that uh, we really could put it into a circuit I mean into a radio and that we are really able to you know um, uh, heat a quartz in a way that uh, the temperature which will be caused by the power uh, amplifier so by the finals will not really influence this quartz any longer and th therefore we will then be able to avoid the frequency drift. Well meanwhile let us have a look how this little circuit uh, is working. This is of course a simplified circuit so it is more or less a little bit a block diagram but uh, I think with uh, this uh, diagram you will understand uh, how it works. So we have here our uh, comparator and uh, here we have an inverting uh, amplifier and uh, then we have here our heating transistor. And uh, let us uh, imagine that uh, we put a positive uh, voltage, a ref voltage um, of about 1.2 volt to the inverting input. And uh, at the same time we do not have uh, any voltage at our non-inverting input. So that means that with the positive voltage at the inverting input this will create low at the output. So well um, we can uh, easily say it is like ground what we will have at the output. It's not completely right but maybe it is easier to understand. But anyway, so now we have a low at uh, the output with our uh, positive voltage at the inverting input. And that means with this inverting um, amplifier we will have here a high and this high will switch our heating transistor and the current can fly through. So then we have uh, here our sensor and our sensor is nothing else uh, than a PTC and uh, you may know already that uh, a P PTC resistor has a lower resistor as long the PTC is cold and uh, if it gets hot or warm whatever then uh, the resistor is uh, coming up and that means if as long the PTC is cold the voltage over this PTC is lower than our ref voltage as long that is the case uh, the heating transistor will heat our quartz. And then, because you know the PTC as sensor is also connected uh, to or uh, is put to 
our copper um, close to the quartz and then of course the PTC gets heated up by you know the heating transistor as well like the quartz and if or in the moment where the voltage over the PTC is going as well to 1.2 volt like our reference voltage or higher then with this positive voltage at the uh, um, non-inverting input means we have exactly in that moment we have then a high at the output put of our op amp and a high uh, to this inverting amplifier means we have at the output a low and this low will then close down the current flow through our heating transistor and this uh, circuit or this cycle will happen as long the radio is switched on so the sensor will control the temperature um, at the quartz and if the temperature uh, is reached then the heating transistor gets switched off and when the temperature is dropping down then again you know uh, the heating transistor will get switched on automatically by uh, the op amp and of course by our sensor which will be in this case a PTC and that is uh, all uh, the miracle you know so nothing special but uh, well let us now have a look how this circuit will look like on uh, a circuit board on a proto board and then let us check if we are able uh, to you know really can operate a, a circuit like this in our radio which we already know and which we already use for training purposes okay and uh, what you can uh, see here is a protoboard uh, planning so that uh, is the way I'm uh, doing it so you plan all uh, the connections which uh, are needed so the red lines are bridges and you see the components and uh, as well here the little op amp and uh, well that is a planning uh, before you can really build uh, a circuit like this on a, a, a proto board and uh, yeah here it is so this uh, is our proto board and uh, you can uh, easily uh, see this here is our little uh, op amp okay and uh, here this is uh, our heating transistor and here this is uh, our PTC which will be the sensor to switch our heating transistor on and off to hold um, our wanted uh, temperature at um, the quartz. So let uh, us see if uh, we can get it work shall we? And here now you can see it in operation. So what uh, I've done is uh, to put our heating element. So let me uh, go closer so that you really can see it. So we uh, just uh, wanted to heat this uh, quartz down here and you see the copper is around it and you can uh, also see the uh, heating uh, transistor and uh, here is our sensor and uh, as well here is uh, our proto board which uh, is here uh, already in the radio um, so now uh, the uh, circuit uh, is uh, working and uh, you can uh, see that uh, the LED is uh, switched on and now it is uh, switching off because uh, the temperature is reached and uh, 
Well, yeah, we uh, have some elements uh, connected now to uh, the protoboard to um, to see if uh, it works how we would like to have it. Uh, first of all, uh, we are monitoring uh, the temperature at uh, the quartz. And uh, the uh, temperature is um, adjusted uh, somewhere around uh, 60, 70, uh, 60, 67 degree centigrade somewhere uh, around uh, that point and uh, at uh, that uh, point our um, our heating transistor will get uh, switched off and that means then you know the uh, temperature starts uh, dropping so what uh, is uh, now happening because the uh, temperature is reached and uh, you really see the temperature uh, dropping and it is dropping fairly fast because you know uh, we uh, do not have uh, a cover on uh, here so that uh, is a reason that uh, all the heat um, will go uh, out and uh, the uh, air temperature here in the lab is uh, somewhat around uh, 20 degrees centigrade so you know uh, the temperature will be dropping very fast and um, well you can uh, also see it uh, here on uh, the power supply as long as the temperature is not reached where we want to have it the heating uh, element uh, is on so the heating transistor is uh, working and uh, is producing heat and when the sensor yeah now now you can see it it uh, drops but it comes back very very fast um, because that is what uh, I've said before all uh, the uh, temperature uh, gets lost uh, due to the fact that uh, we do not have a cover uh, on but uh, I, I, I think uh, you you can see uh, the idea and uh, you you may imagine when uh, the cover is on then the uh, temperature will be uh, hold here uh, in in uh, the unit and um, the heating uh, element uh, does not have so much to do um, and additional to that you will uh, have the temperature from the power amplifier so that you really have constant temperature inside and uh, well um, if we heat uh, the uh, oscillator with uh, yeah, you see now we are at uh, 68 so now it uh, is uh, yeah so that is now the temperature where it really uh, switches and you see now again the dropping and uh, the uh, heater element is um, already heating it up so you see that uh, suddenly the temperature stops while uh, the um, heating element is already working and now you see the temperature is creeping uh, up uh, as well and uh, you can also see it here uh, because the uh, let me see if uh, we can get it a bit better uh, well I, I think you you can read uh, the the digits and the display so what uh, you can uh, see here is the voltage over our our uh, sensor and uh, you see that uh, the voltage is uh, creeping up and uh, at uh, 2.1.22 um, uh, uh, I guess uh, it was there the 
circuit is switching and uh, we just had a, a switch but now uh, the element is back on uh, heating and uh, you see again the voltage increasing and uh, as I said it will increase um, until 1.228 uh, some, somewhat and uh, that is the point where the comparator is switching. Yeah, so um, that uh, is uh, the, 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 the whole circuit and uh, the circuit uh, itself has already been uh, proved uh, in the uh, 80s as I uh, told it um, at the beginning at that video when uh, it was not possible to uh, buy um, a very expensive oven controlled um, oscillator so we just do this and uh, this was uh, always working very very well but uh, let me say it again it is not necessary to do it in radio, radio like this so I mean okay this is uh, only our uh, test and uh, training unit but uh, anyhow this is uh, uh, FM and uh, AM radio only and uh, this circuit is uh, only needed in radios where you have single side band because on single side band we really need a constant uh, temperature a constant oscillator temperature and uh, in that case um, this circuit is really a nice solution to keep the temperature and with keeping the temperature on the desired temperature we avoid uh, the frequency drift and that is what it is all about and um, yeah one um, additional information the plus and uh, minus for um, our little circuit will easily connect it uh, here you know to the input leads um, of our radio so now okay it is uh, connected uh, to our power supply but uh, normally uh, we would now connect it here uh, to uh, our um, to our uh, power supply socket and then it would be directly um, supplied by the uh, car battery or by our external power supply wherever you uh, have this radio in use so I hope you have got the idea and I hope uh, you uh, understand that uh, even a, a sheep radio with a sheep oscillator inside which is not able to keep its, its temperature it is simply uh, possible to um, bring the drift back to zero not back to zero just easily to zero because that is what you want especially in SSB okay so uh, that is uh, it for today I hope uh, this uh, was a bit uh, interesting for you and um, shows you another solution what you can do to improve your own radio and uh, well yeah if you like it please uh, give me a big thumb up for this video and uh, well catch you next time bye